how do we know that Jesus actually lived and did all of the things that the Bible says he did? Let's talk about it. How do we know? How do we know that Jesus actually lived and did all the things the Bible says he did? Very few people would try to argue that Jesus never lived. There's just too much historical evidence. In fact, very few people would argue that Jesus didn't do miraculous and mysterious things while he was here on earth. But by far, the largest collection of stories of Jesus's life is found in the library of books we call the Bible. And the reason so many people have studied the Bible and concluded that it's reliable is that it is a collection of books unlike any other collection in history. It's a magnificent work, and it's more than just a history book. It's by far the most read book in history, and it gives us insights into periods of history and civilization that we have no other documentation of and it confirms some of the claims of history books, and it refutes other claims in history books. People are always using historians to prove the claims of the Bible are true. But that's like trying to use your kid's long division to confirm that a calculator is correct. It's illogical. You don't use the inferior to prove the superior. In the words of my nerdy friends, you don't use Loki's strength to judge Hulk's strength. Enough! You are all of you beneath me. I am a god, you dull creature. And I will not be bullied by that. Puny god. But because it's all we have, we're going to talk about what other historians and historical works say about the stuff that the Bible says. The first four books of the New Testament are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We call them the Gospels. They are the books that make up most of the claims about Jesus. So today we're going to focus on them. So let's compare the other Gospels to other historical books. Papias, Josephus, Tacitus, Suetonius, and other historians, political writers, and critics confirm many of the stories in the Gospels. Many early historians wrote about Jesus being a sorcerer who used the spirits to perform magical acts. Josephus, a first century Roman historian, wrote about Jesus being crucified. He wrote about how Jesus' followers wouldn't deny that they had seen him perform miracles. The Talmud itself, a Jewish book that has every reason to refute the life of Christ, confirms that Jesus performed miracles. So then, because we have had such a hard time believing stories in the gospel in the past, we start asking the question, did the books say the same thing back then? that they say now. So we have to look at the earliest copies of the book we have. We don't have any originals of the books, but we have copies, many copies, that would have been written within the lifetime of the disciples or the followers of the authors of those books. These copies would have been overseen by the authors themselves. Remember that back then, the best way to preserve a book was to copy it because they didn't have the technology to preserve writing like we do today. So to protect protect the book, they meticulously copied these books. It happened with every ancient book we have. In fact, we don't have original copies of any of the ancient books. So we have to rely on the copies. But let's compare the Bible's books to other ancient books. Over on the left are some of the most famous ancient writings in history. The writings of Caesar, Plato, Aristotle, and the one that is, that is the most comparable to the Bible is Homer's Iliad. It was written in 900 BC, and the earliest copy we have of it is from 400 BC. That means that 500 years elapsed between the writing of the book and the first copy that we have and we have 643 ancient copies of this book. And those numbers make those other writings look quite unverified. 
but compare it to the New Testament of the Bible. The books of the New Testament were written between 40 and 96 AD, and we have a copy of the book of John from 125 AD. That means that only 30 years elapsed between the writing and the earliest copy that we have. In terms of ancient writing, that's no time at all. And on top of that, we have over 24,000 copies of the New Testament. No other book in history even comes close or is verified even nearly as much. We have an incredibly reliable New Testament. And even if we didn't have a single copy of the Gospels, they were so often quoted by other authors in the first few centuries that we could have easily reconstructed the Gospels just using the quotations of other authors. So stop here and answer the first three questions and then push play again. If it was all a lie, why did thousands of Christians spring up all over the world claiming that Jesus rose from the dead? And some of those people would be killed, not because of something they believed happened, but because, something, because of something they saw happen. They were so convinced because they saw it happen. After the great fire of Rome in 64 AD, Tacitus, a Roman historian, wrote this about the Christians. Consequently, to get rid of the report, Nero fastened the guilt and inflicted the most inquisitive tortures on a class hated for their abominations called Christians by the populace. Christus, from whom the name had its origin, suffered the extreme penalty during the reign of Tiberius at the hands of one of our procurators, Pontius Pilate, and a most mischievous superstition, thus checked for the moment again broke out only, not only in Judea, the first source of the evil, but even in Rome, where all these hideous and shameful from every part of the world find their center and become popular. Accordingly, an arrest was first made of all who pleaded guilty. Then, upon their information, an immense multitude was convicted, not so much of the crime of firing the city as of hatred against mankind. So just 30 years after the death of Jesus, there's so many Christians in Rome, that's more than 2,500 miles from Jerusalem, that Nero blamed them for the fire because he didn't want to take the blame himself. James, Jesus' own brother, and Paul, a guy who made a living killing Christians, converted to Christianity after Jesus resurrected. Something pretty amazing must have happened to convince them that Jesus was who he said he was. If Jesus didn't raise from the dead and appear to people, the Christian movement would have never spread like it did, and the number of people disputing their claims would have been more than just held to those people who had something to gain politically. The stories in the Bible are true, and thousands of people have died so that you will know that they're true. There is nothing in the world like this book. This is what we believe. We don't worship this book, but we need it because it tells us who we are. And you can trust it. You can believe it. Stop here and answer the rest of the questions, and I'll see you Sunday in church.